life! I'm so fucking tired of this shit, I just want to get it over with already. This is where the writing just completely shits the bed and stops trying entirely to make any kind of fucking sense. The Guardian manages to somehow abduct you by magically steering your ship to his stronghold. Yeah, chalk that up as another power he just inexplicably has, controlling the wind all over the world. Essentially, he just lets you take some free shots at him, which do nothing except damage you. Do you understand yet? Do you see that you can't hurt me? All of your energy, all of the damage that you would inflict upon me, is reflected back onto yourself. I am Rubber Avatar. You are glue. Are you beginning to see the futility of resisting me, Avatar? Yeah, sure, big guy, whatever. I know this guy's supposed to be like the ultimate god of evil or something, and I'm supposed to feel super intimidated right now, but... You know, it's hard for me to feel awestruck or threatened at all by a guy when all I can focus on is the fact that he's standing buck-ass naked right in front of me and he's kind of in my personal space right now. Take, for example, your friends in Scarabray. It's true that they have managed to avoid the effects of my columns, but that is of no matter. And to prove to you that resistance is futile, he casually wipes out the town of Scarabray with his magic and forces you to watch. And again, if he can summon a fiery fucking maelstrom to erase any city he wants, any time he wants, why is he bothering with the fucking columns and the moon crashing crap? But why? Brackett is no mad dog killer. He is after something. And then he just, he just lets you go. Think about it, Avatar. We, we need to get Really? Just, just lets you go. I mean... You could argue that the Guardian is trying to break your will or destroy your spirit, and okay, maybe, but except for the fact that the Worm Guards are still under orders just to kill you. He's still trying to drop the fucking moon on your head. I just really don't get it. Oh, fuck, now I, he's done something worse than kill me. I can't move. I can't walk. I can't move. Raven, help me. I forgot how to walk. My legs don't work. And the game is completely hung. And there we have it. I'm worried, Raven. I'm not sure I can defeat the Guardian. What are you talking about? You're the Avatar. You can't fail. I know I'm the Avatar, but he just seems so powerful. I know, he's just so powerful. If only I'd become a god or a titan of ether at some point, maybe then I could take him. He destroyed Skara Brave, for goodness sake. It's been destroyed again! How many times can a town get butt-fucked by a fiery cataclysm? How do I cleanse the Shrine of Justice? Just like you cleanse the other shrines, your knowledge of the land shall be great. After that weird and exceedingly pointless interlude, you're given free control to steer your ship wherever you want to go. And it's every bit as slow and as underwhelming and as fucking soul-crushingly boring as you think it is. Yeah, anyone who bitches about the sailing part of Wind Waker can officially go fuck a garbage disposal after this. I can feel myself fucking dying as I play this. It really does give you perspective on the scope and grandeur of the world of Britannia, though. Check this out, I mean, we can circumnavigate the globe in under five minutes! Part of me really wants to just kind of map out how big this planet actually is, because I really doubt it's bigger than your average size fucking golf course. Only when you find the staff will I allow you to enter the Lyceum. What is the Lyceum? What's a paladin? How does one find the Lyceum? Your knowledge of the land shall be great. Where is the Lyceum? The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? Going back to Moonglow, Titus won't cough up the Mantra of Honesty, so you have to go to the Lyceum and talk to the Book of Truth to get it. It's funny, because I, I, I seem to remember the Lyceum being, uh... What's the word? Castle? A castle which didn't fucking fly? I, I just seem to distinctly remember just walking in the gate and not flying some fucking flying canoe thing. I guess my point is that the assembled collection of all of Britannia's knowledge should probably be larger than a fucking snow cone stand! Thank you very much. 
Anyway, guys, get ready to be seriously pissed off at a talking fucking book and the piss-poor excuse for preachy morality it's about to spew all over you. Answer this question first. Are you responsible for the destruction that has recently befallen the land? Yes. Sadly, I am. How the fuck is that even remotely logical? The whole game, they try to push this dipshit mentality that the Guardian is your dark half, born as some kind of cosmic equal and opposite reaction to you becoming the ultimate force of goodness. But that doesn't make you fucking responsible for the destruction of Britannia because you just went out seeking to do good shit. Really, where the fuck does the Book of Truth get off for laying this guilt trip at your feet? It's just insane! It's like saying Alexander Graham Bell is responsible for creating the Jerky Boys. It's like blaming George Carlin for creating Carlos Mencia. I mean, what the fuck is this stupid book talking about? I am responsible. The Avatar is responsible for th I don't see no smoking gun in the Avatar's hand. You know, here's a thought. I'd be more apt to blame the guy sending dragons to enact a scorched earth campaign from his fortress shaped like a two mile tall fucking mushroom head. I got an idea. Let's hang responsibility on the motherfuckers trying to smash moons into the planet, okay? I got enough fucking problems without this shit getting dumped on me. It's just, I, you know, the only thing you can do is just admit it and leave and finish clearing out the dungeons. So you go to Trinsic where all the paladins are. What's a paladin? <sighs> yeah, well... You know how mad I got over what's a paladin, right? Uh, you know, because it was it's the it's the biggest betrayal ever. You know, like it just it ruins everything. It, 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 Dupre, the paladin, sacrifices himself by burning himself alive in your place to not only save the world but to save every world, everywhere, and every person on it. By restoring cosmic balance, I, I can't, I, I don't know how they did it. I, I, when I played it, I, I was like, this is the worst thing they could possibly, I, I, I couldn't think of any, there's no way they did it. You could have told me the Guardian was from fucking Zeist. I'd buy that, because he, he kind of does, you know, but... They did it. Can, can you think of a... They came up with a way. They came up with something worse. Richard Garriott. What the fuck have you wrought? I, I can't even tell you what it is yet because it comes way later near the end. But you, you just gotta remember the whole... The concept of honor and... Dupre and what he represented and, and what he did for the Avatar and the story. Like... Alright. So first off, none of the paladins here know the mantra of honor. I repeat, the warriors devoted to honor do not know the mantra of honor. I am Lucero, one of the last paladins of Trinsic. What's a paladin? What can you tell me about Trinsic? Your knowledge of the land shall be great. How did the paladins lose their honor? Gee, let me think about this one. Hey, do you think it could have something to do with the same evil columns that have inverted the moralities of every fucking town you've been to so far? Learn the mantra of honor. It is lost to all who still live in Britannia. How does nobody know the fucking mantra? Did nobody write this shit down? It's one word! One fucking word! You'd think they'd engrave it somewhere, everywhere! Maybe in the temple devoted to fucking honor? There's eight fucking words people gotta remember around here. Does nobody take this Avatar shit seriously but me? You know the Avatar is so dumb he can barely chew. Someone, please, would you get this son of a bitch a fucking pen? In fact, the only person who knows the mantra is Dupre. And guess what? He's fucking dead. I mean, there's no reason the Avatar should know the mantra by now, right? So, somehow, you have to find a way to talk to Dupre. And no, even if you know the mantra, it doesn't work unless you do the quest to talk to him. Fuck you. Some guy tells you that you have to go to the Paladin's tomb here and go get Dupre's ashes. This is wrong on so many levels. Like, how in the fuck did they get Dupre's ashes back from Serpent Isle? I asked, it must have been really fucking tricky, considering the ashes no longer fucking exist! They were used to bind the three banes into the Great Chaos Serpent. Guess what? They're fucking gone! 
Oh, what, did Shamino and Yolo just put some campfire ashes in a fucking jar and just tell people it was to pray? So yeah, you just go in there and rob your best friend's grave and take his ashes to the shrine to conjure up his spirit. This is... it's just unbelievable. It'd be funny if it weren't so fucking offensive and sad. Greetings, old friend. I see that you are well. Yeah, there he is! <laughs> There's fucking Debray! There's his spirit, even though it's been bound forever into the Great Chaos Serpent and is, for all intents and purposes, gone. He tells you to go get the Chalice of Honor, which is something they just made up for this game. It's at the bottom of the dungeon, of course, and when you get there, it's full of zillions of identical chalices. Which one is it? You must choose. But choose wisely. Yeah, have you noticed Blackthorn is now wearing an eye patch? Got no fucking clue why, because in the scene where he gets injured, the Dagger Raven through clearly misses his eye. Blackthorn's already beat you down here and picked out the correct chalice, and he just smashes it to spite you. But Dupre tells you it doesn't really matter, since, you know, it's just a bullshit symbol. And I, I don't think anybody really knew what it looked like anyway. What? I mean, nobody knows the one-syllable mantra of honor. You really think they can tell one of these fucking cups from another? I could bring them a fucking big gulp and they'd probably believe it. And yeah, I keep mentioning Lord Blackthorn, a walking plot hole in this game, if ever there was one. They really wrote themselves into a corner with this fucking guy. Okay, dude takes over Britannia in Ultima V. At the end of that game, Lord British shows mercy on him and exiles the dude through a moon gate to God knows where, because it wasn't really his fault that he was evil, he just got influenced by the Shadow Lords. Later on, one of the most interesting parts of Serpent Isle comes when you visit the monastery, and you find out what ultimately became of Lord Blackthorn when you read one of the monk's journals. Yeah! I actually read the books in every RPG I play. It's some of the most interesting stuff in those games most times. I even read the fucking flavor text for missions in World of Fucking Warcraft, and I bet you don't do that shit right. I guess I'm just sick that way. But you know why I do it? Very simple. It's because I care about the story in RPGs. I certainly fucking cared about the story in the Ultima series, and reading the books, it's little stuff like that in Serpent Isle that give you moments of closure, that make all the time and effort and love you poured into the series all worthwhile. At least until this fucking game occurred! The book tells you that Blackthorn found peace and enlightenment at the monastery, and learned the error of his ways and tried to seek some redemption. He learned that birth, rank, titles, power, and gold are meaningless. We're brought into this world equal, and we depart from it carrying nothing with us but our deeds good and ill. Wow, man. Now, I guess everyone really does deserve a second chance. Even Blackthorn was able to find peace and rededicate his life to something better. Well, 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 the mighty Avatar. Or fuck that, I guess. It's shit like this that just spits in the face of your diehard fans, just drags the sweaty nuts of contempt across your face and takes $20 from your fucking wallet on the way out. No pathos, no redemption, no character arc, no motivation. He's just back and he's a Weasley shit. Fuck, it really makes you appreciate the character development that was given to the guy in Ultima V. That game was fucking brilliant! Here the guy is just completely one-dimensional. He's got exactly one note, and that's... <laughs> and he just hits that every fucking scene. Blackthorn, you may leave us now. He truly is a worm, isn't he? Oh well. I still need him for a while yet. Okay, why? Why do you need him? Why do you need anyone? The Guardian is a god! You're indestructible, and apparently you're omnipotent because you control the wind and can kill anyone with a thought. And why him, specifically? What can Blackthorn do that nobody else can do? I mean, if he, I get it if he just wanted someone to open his mail or mop the floors, but fucking anyone can do that, and probably for less money. In fact, literally anyone else as the bad guy would have been a better fit. If he's just some anonymous flunky from the Worm Guard, at least there, you're not ruining anything. Blackthorn is like, the one guy who shouldn't be in this role. Cause he's redeemed, he's on Serpent Isle. And if you still want him in this game, if he's actually here in Britannia, 
It'd have been a way more interesting character development to have your one-time arch enemy join you and help you against the Guardian, right? I mean, with Batlin, it made total sense why the Guardian would need that guy. Because back then, he needed someone to serve as the public face of the Fellowship. He's a powerful sorcerer and a persuasive man, and he needed Batlin to quietly corrupt the people of Britannia into a loyal army, because he couldn't cross the dimensions by himself. He needed someone on the other side to construct the Black Gate, and he needed people to protect it from the Avatar. But now that he's here, he doesn't really need anyone to do anything for him. He's already effectively conquered the entire world. Now you have a choice. Open the portcullis and trust me, or we sit here and rot. Come on, Anaj, you know that I never lie. All right, but you'd better keep your word. On second thought, I think that I'd better leave you in there. Tell me, Avatar, what are your intended plans for the Great Dragon? Oh, I intend to serve her as best I can. You truly are a compassionate man. Glad to be of service. How about a date? <laughs> I am glad you are here, Avatar. I need your help. Oh shit, I forgot this one part, yeah. This quest really put my balls in a salad shooter. You run across this asshole in a lighthouse that looks like a garden gnome, and he tells you that he needs you to find these four magic gemstones that go in lighthouses all over Britannia. They're these huge fucking jewels like a massive ruby, diamond, sapphire, and emerald. Because that's how lighthouses worked in medieval times, right? They, they ran on rubies the size of your fucking head. You have to basically search every inch of the entire world to find these fucking things, if you even manage to do it at all. They don't mention a reward when you take the quest, but, it, you know, it's gotta be awesome, right? Lord British himself commissioned these lighthouses and these huge fucking gemstones for the safety of the realm. So just go ahead and thrill me here. Guess what the reward turns out to be. Oh, seriously, I want you to go ahead and guess. This quest takes the entire game, is virtually impossible, and requires an insane amount of backtracking. Let's just, just say that you're the designer of Ultima 9. And I haven't killed you yet. Let's just say that you're designing this, and what would you offer as the reward for this nearly impossible heroic task? Well, say, a, a magic sword, a magic armor, magic spells, magic something. Well, <laughs> no. Go ahead, have you guessed something? <laughs> because you won't get it. Now, this is probably where you're expecting me to roll the clip from UHF where the guy lifts a box and says, NOTHING! But no, I promise you, it's not nothing. You get, you get something for this quest. <laughs> You're gonna love it too. Just guess something, anything. Your reward for this task is 100 gold pieces. 100 bucks. The guy doesn't even mention what your reward is, probably because he's so fucking ashamed. But yeah, you hear something hit your inventory and it goes by so fast, I didn't even know what it was. I had to double check the footage to see what I got. It's a hundred gold pieces. A hundred for hours and hours and hours of painstaking meticulous searching the planet. You know, I step on fucking rats and make more than a hundred gold pieces. What the fuck is a hundred gold pieces to me? The cum sucking hooker in Buccaneers Den got my hundred gold pieces, the dirty pirate whore, and she didn't get fucked as hard for her time as I just did. You guys couldn't come up with anything? This is what my time and effort is worth to Lord British. Why do I work for this son of a bitch? Cause I gotta tell you guys, I'm not entirely sure. I know that you need this stone. Reveal the Lyceum and I'll give it to you. How can I believe that you'll hand it over? Because I'm an honorable man. Very well. I suppose I don't have a choice. The next town you go to is Valoria, a city besieged by demons from hell. Although it's not really a city so much as it is a fort because the demons have destroyed everything else. But here's my question though. Who the fuck builds a fortress inside an active volcano? Look at this fucking place. Why would you do this? There's boiling streams of lava right inside the door. There's not even railings around this shit. Not to mention, if this were even remotely taking place in the real world, you wouldn't be able to get within 10 yards of this shit without getting burned to death or inhaling lethal fumes. And these guys are wearing suits of chainmail just standing around it? Oh my god. Do you have any idea what it must smell like in there? It'd just be this visible funk, this haze you could see that smells of sulfur, swamp-ass, sweaty balls, and feet. Just explain to me, why would anyone live here? 
Because, let me spell it out for you. A. Active volcano. B. Fucking demons live here. Do the math. Guys, just leave. Go somewhere. And even if you want to tell me they would never leave because they're valorous knights who wouldn't flee from combat, well, if the columns are inverting the virtues like they do everywhere, then they would definitely run, wouldn't they? There's only one guy here who could help you get rid of the demons, this mage, but unfortunately he was injured in the most recent attack and can't help you. So, wisely, you heal him with your magic, and it works great, when suddenly... All the good you do can be just as easily undone. Yeah, the Guardian just kills him. You know, why... What, what, what the fuck is even... I, I can't, I, I just... Maybe if I put my girl Spoonie wig on, I'll feel better. No. It's not working. <laughs>